So, good morning, everyone. My name is Sogne. Uh, I came for here from Lithuania, from Vilnius, where I work at the State Enterprise GIS Center uh, as a product engineer. And our organization is a manager of uh, Lithuanian Spatial Data Infrastructure Portal, Job Portal LT. So, it's not a big surprise, but today I'm going to talk about uh, spatial data infrastructure in Lithuania, how it works, why it works, and how it grows. I think uh, this conference uh, gives us a good chance to compare the situation uh, of spatial data and spatial data infrastructure in different uh, Baltic states. Uh, so let's start with our sad history, because I think it's very important um, if you want to com know how much you have already achieved, uh, you, every time you need to look back at your start point. And our start point was not really good because there was like huge tension between spatial data users and sh spatial data providers uh, because most of the uh, data was uh, paid. Even governmental institutions had to pay to another governmental institutions if we wanted to get the data they need, which is not doesn't sound like really effective working. Uh, and every spatial data provider had their own mm, data provision, their own restrictions, and they thought that it's really like it's normal. And why we why do we need to change something? And of course, uh, spatial data providers used different technologies, uh, the formats that is the most suitable to them. So the users uh, had to be happy that they got, if they got the data at all, and they shouldn't be complaining uh, about the formats. Uh, so let's look closer who are the spatial data users and spatial data providers in Lithuania. So if you look at the spatial data provider side, you can see that um, in Lithuania, spatial data providers are mostly governmental institutions, such uh, state land service, which provide um, spatial data from different registers and cadastres. Uh, about our environment, mostly uh, data about our land, and this data is official, of course, and we still don't have enough resources to share the data efficiently. Uh, while um, governmental inst institutions uh, make uh, a significant part of our spatial data users too, as well as society and business. Uh, but we can see that these three types of users are so different. They have different needs and experience. For example, land surveyors, uh, they work with uh, specialized software like AutoCAD, and they need um, data in CAD formats, and they also they have problems with data transformations. While you, uh, simple users from uh, society, we usually don't have um, any skills uh, working with G uh, GIS technology, so we don't have software, so we need really user-friendly solutions. But they all have something in common, so they always want more and better quality data and want it now, so we don't have time to wait. So it's obvious that spatial data providers can't meet uh, the needs of spatial data users. And the solution is uh, spatial data infrastructure. Uh, it was impossible to make some friendly ne negotiations between us and um, spatial data providers, so we had to make some changes in our legal acts because you could see that uh, most of our data providers and most of our users are um, uh, governmental institution, and the best way to control them is to make changes in our laws. So legal acts um, obligated uh, national institutions to provide data into the national portal. Then we got the data, uh, and we opened uh, the, not only the data, but also the way how data can be accessed and used. And the last but not least thing was technologies. We usually tend to think that uh, technologies is the most important thing, uh, but we couldn't use um, 
GIS um, software without any data. So uh, the hub, but anyway, the technologies is really important. And Lafiani had created a hub for national geospatial solutions to publish services and applications. Uh, so in 2009, uh, GeoPortal was established. And GeoPortal LT is the, um, is the heart of our sp national spatial data infrastructure. Uh, it saves lots of time to find data in different institutions because you can search the data, you can know what data is available in our country, uh, you don't need any software to view the data, and you, uh, GeoPortal lets you um, to transform data in any format you need and to don download it and everything is done online so you don't need to go to different institutions uh, to get the data you need and life becomes much, much easier and uh, as i remember myself like five years ago when i was studying geography for my bachelor uh, I had lots of tasks to, making, to make some different maps, but I had really no idea where to get data at all. So <laughs> my life was quite complicated. Uh, we even, like me and my colleagues, uh, we even had to create the data by ourselves, like vectorizing it. So it was not really accurate. And uh, maybe two years later, I found out that uh, the magical place Geoportal LT exists in our country. And you can download, uh, for example, um, georeferential based uh, raster data, so you don't need vectorized buildings by yourself. So now we have happy ending. Uh, spatial data providers and spatial data uh, users don't fight anymore, uh, but sometimes, uh, there is fight between spatial data users and us, like geoportal administrations, administrators, because they sometimes they complaining that something is not working, and sometimes we also need to fight with spatial data providers because they still, some of them don't want to give us the data our users need. Uh, so, yeah, everything sounds nice, but let's look what the number says uh, how about our portal. So, we can see that um, the growth of the number of uh, GeoPortal T register users is quite stable. Uh, now we have uh, more than 16,000 registered users. Uh, we have almost uh, 500 unique spatial data sets, which are free of charge and 9,000 orders of the data sets per year. Uh, okay, it's quite cool to have um, data and to have effective way to share the data, like spatial data in the country, but we always want some more, so we create some more solutions and now uh, we have not, um, our users are not just simple, um, uh, persons, but we also have systems as our users too. Uh, so we create, uh, first of all, we created services for effective uh, data sharement and uh, we share these um, services not only in the job portal LT, but we also share it with uh, external informational systems like official portal for statistics, register of territorial planning documents, and the cadaster of rivers, lakes, and ponds. So um, they use our like background layer, uh, other services. So we don't, it means that they save uh, our, their resources and they don't need to create their own services, make their own visualization, and so that saves them lots of time and money for them. Uh, next thing we uh, try to uh, make is e-governmental solutions. Uh, now we have uh, 12 uh, e-governmental solutions. Uh, which is uh, related to um, land management, assessing and reportment. So uh, if a person wants to um, uh, 
for example, build a road or um, build an um, electricity line through the land, uh, uh, through the state land uh, where um, land parcels uh, are not formed. The, the only way is to go to GeoPortal LT and to make a request. Our users um, like add some spatial data or uh, they can draw uh, an object we want to build online and they fill this request and our state um, land service uh, uh, approves it or decline it. So it's like really effective way of um, governmental working and um, there is no other way, like there is no paper way anymore from the last year. So this is how our solutions works. Uh, and we have, now we have uh, more than 3,000 users who works with uh, such solutions. And we have also have more friendly uh, applications because uh, now mm, our GeoPortal LT uh, map browser became so big and full of different data. So if we want to um, have like more f like friendly solutions for our uh, users from society, we need to create something like more friendly. So there mm, we have. In this case, we create some simple applications such as uh, geographic information for education where we put only the services uh, which are related to um, geographic information for education, which, is, which could be interesting for pupils. And other examples are flight restriction information from drone pilots, mobile network success information, and management system for uh, regional tourism centers. And uh, we, um, we can't ignore the fact that more and more um, web application uh, is uh, being adapted to mobile devices, so we uh, do it as well. Now we have uh, uh, free mobile apps uh, one is uh, like uh, GeoPortal mobile version, uh, which has like the basic um, functionality of GeoPortal LT, and uh, our users can uh, use the spatial data wherever we are. For example, um, one of our users uh, is an ener energy uh, contribution operator, so their uh, employees and their partners use uh, the data of electricity lines or gas lines uh, wherever we are, so we don't need to be at their office, we can use our data uh, outside too. We also have an app for, for fishermen and one for... Um, and not so much time ago, we created uh, another app uh, for governmental institutions, institution, uh, which lets their users to report um, some problems. So here you can see the huge number of uh, average number. This is, this is number means uh, average number of the requests to GeoPortal e-services per month. So we could see that we have a um, um, like huge variety of uh, uh, GIS solutions, huge variety of applications, web applications, but mobile applications, uh, um, external uh, information systems who use our data. So it makes this number so huge. And it means that uh, per day our services uh, gets uh, more than one million requests. And we still, it's not enough for us. We can't stop here. So we try to, like, if you know that um, there is inspired directive, and because of this directive, uh, Job Portal is a part of European spatial data infrastructure. So we tried. Um, to adapt our data and transform it 
and provide the, it uh, to the European geoportality. So that this could help uh, solve not only national problems, but also it could be useful for European Union needs. And in conclusion, I would like to say that uh, GeoPortal LT is a good uh, example of uh, effective investment because you invest, it, uh, invest once and use it everywhere. And one investment to hardware, software and specialists saves uh, the budget and helps government, business and people uh, to save their uh, time and resources. And why we need to talk uh, about this in this conference, uh, that I would like to emphasize that uh, here Esri products and ArcGIS solutions uh, work together with us and without uh, powerful technologies, everything would be much uh, diff more difficult. Uh, so thank you for your attention. <laughs> if, I don't know if I have questions or not. <laughs> thank you. Very, it is a very question from the audience, um, and I think we have time for that. Um, question is, what is, the, what is a process to have spatial data up to date, and how often does it change? Oh. <laughs> So there's n not this, like, we have different ways uh, to get uh, data from our providers. Some of them uh, share the data via uh, services, but some of them uh, still don't have enough resources. They don't have RGS server, for example, and they just uh, give um, uh, their database and we uh, publish it uh, as uh, data services and put upload it like share it in our portal okay. <laughs>